She uh, has five years of college, um, just shy of completing her uh, college degree from Fairleigh Dickinson University. Uh, my nephew, James, uh, has a college degree from the University of Maryland. And uh, next year, this time, he will be a lawyer. Um, so uh, family was important to me because I missed having my biological father. So I wanted to instill in my family um, the importance of, of loving one another, um, caring for one another, um, and being there for one another in need because I missed that so much as a kid growing up. And so now um, I'm instilling those same disciplines, those same uh, determinations in my four children, um, Tony, Carrington, uh, Madison, and Kennedy. Um, because family is, is key to overcoming obstacles, is key to uh, getting over criticisms, is key to, to moving your life forward. Um, this church was significant to me for a whole host of reasons, um, one of which is um, I met my wife here. I met my wife at El Bethel Baptist Church on the steps of this church just out front. Um, I was introduced to my wife uh, by my lifelong friend James Gaines, whose father was the pastor of this church. Um, he introduced me to my wife. Um, we've since married, and we have four beautiful children. And she is uh, unbelievable. Um, I told her if the roles were reversed and I had to read about her every day, I don't know if I could put up with it. Um, so she is um, incredible. And um, I'm blessed to have her um, as my wife and as someone who's willing to sacrifice um, herself uh, for me. Um, that's very, very important. That's critically important um, as it relates to building um, families. And I don't believe you can have the kind of impact on, on families outside of your own if you don't take care of your own family. So I believe I'm able to serve and to give my all to other communities because um, I've given so much to my own family. So I'm going to read a few excerpts. I may go back and forth. Um, I may go back and forth uh, along the, um, the paper, along the, uh, the book. Um, but know that sometime in September, you'll be able to get the book. On the book, I would like to take credit for the entire book, but I cannot. Uh, my assistant, Ruth Thomas, who's no longer with us, Miss Ruth Thomas um, played a major role in this book. Miss Ruth was a professor at um, King University. She was also my assistant at the Freeholders Office. She was my administrative assistant for the Freeholders Office. And she was compelled by, by my story. Um, so much so, she said, Tony, you need to put that story in writing. Um, she encouraged me um, to read a book by a gentleman by the name of Barack Obama. Um, Barack Obama wrote a book in 1996, I believe, um, entitled Dreams of My Father. Um, it was republished in 2005, uh, but the initial uh, writing was in two, 1996. Um, and I read his book um, about uh, the audacity of hope and then dreams of my father. And then I had the pleasure of meeting him at the Democratic National Convention in Boston in 2002 or 2004, whenever it was. Uh, but my family and I were out for the convention and I had a chance to meet him. I told my wife um, that he would be, uh, at that time I said he'd be the Vice President of the United States of America because uh, the sentiment was that Hillary Clinton would be the president. But I knew he had the um, political skill and um, I believe the historical background um, to understand the needs of America and ultimately he became president of the United States. So um, I also endorsed his candidacy um, before anyone um, locally endorsed uh, President Barack Obama's 
candidacy for president um, because I believed in him. Um, I knew it was an uphill climb, but I believed in him and I thought uh, he would be the best person for our country. So the audacity of hope, um, dreams of my father, were my inspirations to, to write this book. Um, I've been writing the book for almost four years now, maybe a little longer, um, four years or so ago, um, maybe even longer, uh, putting the book together. But I thought it was important to, uh, to talk about it now and um, offer it for, um, for review in September because of the tough times so many people are having, um, whether it's economics, uh, whether it's the local economy, or whether it's just uh, not being, um, not having a job. Um, I wanted people to know that despite all of your adversities, despite of all the ups and downs, um, in spite of the criticisms, um, in spite of what people might think you can become, um, you can achieve. Um, and that's the moral of this book. I'm hoping that this book will encourage those who have failed um, to get back up. Um, I tell my son all the time that um, if you see everybody doing something, then chances are it's not that difficult. But when you find people that are willing to go the extra mile, if you have practice at 4 o'clock and everybody's at practice, then that's expected. But go by the field when nobody's at practice and start working on your skill, start working on your craft. That's how you become the greatest. Um, so I want people to know that they have to work a little harder in order to be um, the best them that they can be. Um, so I'm going to read a few excerpts. I'm going to jump back and forth. Again, on Tuesday morning, this chapter is entitled The Worst Days of Our Lives. On Tuesday morning, June 1st, 1971, Thomas Mack was found hanged in Jefferson County, Georgia jail. A teenage boy whose unfortunate job was to deliver breakfast that morning um, reportedly discovered Mack's body with makeshift news rolled around his uh, rolled up bedding still tied around his neck and covered in bruises, scratches, and cuts, telltale suggestions of a struggle before his death. Um, there's, there's all kind of theories about how my father died. Some say he committed suicide. Um, those that knew him and knew him well uh, said that um, not a chance that he would commit suicide and that he was hanged because um, he argued and fought against um, a sawmill owner that slighted his wages. Now, I don't remember my dad. Don't remember him at all. But if I am anything like him, then I would say he was arguing about his wages and that they didn't pay him well. Um, I know that uh, I would have argued about my wages, so I don't know the, the story surrounding it, but I do know that those that are very, very close to him um, said that there was a history in Louisville, Georgia, of uh, young African Americans being lost or misplaced, um, never to be found again. So Georgia was a small town, a population of about 2,000 people, but um, slavery, and, um, and racism reared his ugly head in that community. Um, so much so that my uh, kindergarten class was the first class to be integrated um, in Georgia. Um, and that was in the early 70s. Um, the first kindergarten class to be integrated um, uh, was our class. Um, otherwise, a normal childhood. Um, this chapter is titled